Why is there even a test column? I asked myself while doing the research for that video and to be honest, I have no idea. You better delete your test column. Why? Let's find out in today's video. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Software Testing. I'm happy that you're here and today's video is about the following topic that you have already read. It's about why you should delete your test column in your development team. So why is it so? Let's take a look. So Agile is almost everywhere. According to Scipio, more than 71 companies, a percent of companies have or are going to implement Agile methodology, so being it Scrum or Kanban or the like, including more than or like including several Fortune 500 companies as well in that 71%. And at the same time, Sipia mentioned that almost or even more than 85 or 86% of software developers working around the world using Agile methodologies. And this is similar, I would say, to testing people and product managers because Agile methodologies are the de facto standard when it comes to fast iterative software testing, uh, software development, development and testing. Sorry for that. And so that's why Agile methodologies are here in the current state of development phase, as I said, and a lot of companies are using it. And with Agile methodologies, there is something that I think is coming to us as a problem. And that's the test column. And let's dive, dive into the topic. Sorry for the interruption. I would like to thank you ShiftSync for being the main sponsor of today's video. The community about quality engineering. If you're a developer, tester, DevOps or product specialist, don't hesitate to jump over to the ShiftSync community to exchange with like-minded people. You can exchange with people on all tech and quality related topics from software development, design, software testing, security performance and whatnot. Also the latest trends in tech of the tech world are covered. Since ShiftSync mission is to bring tech people together and to share knowledge and learn new stuff, here is a new challenge for you to come up. The ShiftSync crossword puzzle. So what is this challenge all about? ShiftSync created a unique crossword puzzle with a focus of testing for you. Topics range from test automation, mobile testing, DevOps and more. All you have to do is to solve the crossword. In total it includes 20 questions. Answer them, send the results over to the judges and win cool prizes. The challenge will start tomorrow on the 17th of October 2023 and the winner will be announced on October 31st which is Halloween. So please find all the details in the video description. There's a link that describes how to participate and what you have to do. A big thank you to ShiftSync for not only supporting my challenge, but also to creating so many great challenges, webinars and more for our community. In case you're watching the video after the challenge, don't worry. Follow the links as well in the video description to learn all about the challenge and the results of the crossword. But before you do that, solve the crossword puzzle yourself to learn something new. So see you all in the community and now back to the main video. So why is there even a test column? I asked myself while doing the research for that video and to be honest, I have no idea like why there is a testing column. Maybe here are some reasons that I was noting down. Testers on the team get their own spot of working. So there is a testing column that's for the testers there. It's, that's the part when they can start work on or it's for better visualization of the testing job. So in case there are tickets in the testing column, everyone knows in the team that the testers are doing the job, right? Having a clear responsibility inside a team can also be a reason. So people feel, let's say, important enough or appreciated if they have their own spot and their own, their own column where they can have their own clear responsibility. Some, for some, it might give guidance too. Someone told the team to create one. Yes, could also be a reason, right? There was somebody in the company who was introducing agile methodologies and there, was, uh, there were testers on the team and they, they said, okay, let's create a testing column. That's a good thing. Hmm. 
I don't think so. So why we all should delete the testing column? So let's talk about that. Test columns create silos inside the Azure team between developers, testers, maybe even between product management, design, or whoever is involved in the development uh, cycle of your product. They lead to handoffs and delays in the progress of a story. And it's true, and I bet for those of you who are working in agile development environments, you have seen this, right? I have seen it myself also when I was working as a tester and I had my own testing column. There was this clear handoff of responsibilities. Developers were coding a couple of days and then there was like throwing it over the fence. Hey, there, there's your ticket in the testing column. That sounds like a waterfall in agile, right? So that we do something and then somebody's going to test it. And this can block things, right? I mean, especially if you are like the only one or the only software tester on your team and you are fighting or like not fighting, that's the wrong word. Actually, you are working with, let's say, four, five, six or even seven developers in your team. You are seen as the bottleneck in some cases, right? Oh, we don't have enough time for testing. Uh, Daniel has so many things to do. We cannot start anything like that or I'm blocked and these kind of topics. I, I bet you had all of it, right? So this leads to a lot of handoffs and delays in the progress. That's why we should delete the test column. The only tester feels responsible for the testing activities. Yes, I have seen it and feel it felt myself. If there is a testing column and I see tickets piling up every day in the daily in the daily stand-up or during the day, the tester was feeling responsibility. It's like, oh my God, that's my responsibility. I have to test faster, do things faster in a way. And, and then the developers at some point say, okay, I'm done. We can start with the next sprint or the next story because I have nothing to do. But the test and the team has like a, a complete column of things. That's wrong. We should get rid of this. And testing activities might start too late in the development process. Also the case, right? I mean, in the beginning, a tester has nothing to do, right? Hmm. Wrong. <laughs> so a tester should start at the at the first day of the new sprint of the of the cycle whenever you work on it you, you can do so many things before actually executing a piece of code and you don't have to wait like if or until something is in a testing column so that's also something i've seen in the past that testers sit down like okay i can do the automation from the last sprint right before the developers are going to to move some tickets in my column also not good and there are even more reasons why you should get rid of the, the testing column. If you uh, have more uh, ideas in mind already, leave it in the comment section below why we should get rid of the testing column. So what are the benefits of having no testing column? So first of all, we are getting rid of the silo thinking inside the team. Yes, that's the biggest benefit. I mean, imagine you come to the office or you, you go in the office now and get rid of your testing column and then the next day, poof, that's like, okay, what's going on here? Yeah, so you get rid of this thinking. Of course, you have to do some education and some 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 proper like a transition phase for that, but you will you will see a change happening in your team once you're gone, done with your testing column. It will create and foster a shared responsibility on the topic of quality and testing. And believe me, if you are without a testing column, you start in the sprint planning or even in the estimation phase or in the discovery phase or even more shift left side of things, thinking about quality, yeah? Think about how I would like to test it. What kind of test data do we need? What are the testing scenarios? And if this information is already at the hand of the developers when they are planning the story, when they're refining it, they're already thinking about, oh, that's the thing I have to think about. Keep in mind, the quality thinking starts early in the process. And the same for product managers and designers. Maybe they have missed an edge case that somebody on the team has found. It doesn't need to be the tester. In many cases, it is. It will increase transparency. Imagine you have only like one single ticket in your testing column saying, test story A, that's it. If you have no testing column, you have to be more precise in your work. You have to be more concrete on the tickets that you're going to test so this is something which will increase transparency in the team. And I will show you in a second how you can do it. It will embrace a continuous testing mindset. Yeah. So in case there is something 
uh, to ready for testing or not ready for testing, but is something that needs testing attention or quality attention, the developers can also pick up the story and they can help you in order to embracing that continuous testing mindset and to, to continue and repeat tasks they have, haven't done or have done before. All team, team members engage in their testing activities. I have seen it. I have worked with teams that had no testing column and we were really precise in the things that we were writ writing, uh, written down in the, in the estimation phase and in the planning phase and they really engaged with the testing activities. They even were like really keen at like, oh, developer A, develop that piece of code. I would like to test it, you know, and there was like this, 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 um, this um, competing um, um, situation where they, they would like to, to, to stress out the code from their peers. Yeah? It will definitely increase the collaboration around quality and around testing. So talking about the good things, what are the benefits and the drawbacks of having no test column? Because this, this can also be uh, a big topic for you, for your team, for your company. So let's take a look at some of them. If there is no dedicated test and the team, testing might be skipped or will be skipped. So that's also something I've seen. I was once uh, coaching a team that had no tester and the first moment when I entered that team, I was like, okay, there's no testing column. Yay, that's great. So they are, they are thinking about testing. And while I was talking to them like, hey, what are your testing activities? How you do exploratory testing, test automation and stuff like that? I just said like, Whoop. what is he talking about right now? And I found out they were doing no testing at all. I was like, oh my God, we have to stop working. We have to do other things right now. So this can be a big drawback if it's not on the mind or like not nothing that people can see and they don't have the right, let's say education and coaching from, from a testing background, this might lead to big drawback, right? Uh, it can also lead to, to the fact that a high level look um, at the board, at the Scrum or Kanban board can give the feeling that the team doesn't care about quality. Look, like imagine in the old days when everybody was in the office and some stakeholders were passing by the boards and was just like a quick look, okay, mm -hmm, okay, something in progress, but why is there no testing? Are they not testing? Are they not, they don't care about quality and stuff like that. So and that, that might be um, from a high level point of view might be a topic, but I don't think that's an issue because if a person thinks that way, he or she should get to the team talk to them and then he or, he or she will find out that this is not the case. So I just were just two drawbacks that came to my mind. Again, if you see another drawbacks of having no testing column, leave it in the comment section. So what should you do in case you don't have a testing column? You should visualize the testing in a better way. And there are some ways that you can do. So there are multiple ways to visualize testing. As I said, you can create a swim lane, for example put tickets in the swim lane if it fits maybe for to your Kanban flow. Have a separate swim lane for testing. Well, then it's a lane, it's not a column, you know, it's, it doesn't feel that right, right? But it's, it's a way to go. You can use color-coded cards on the board. Let's say green for testing, yellow for coding, and so forth. And then everybody sees, oh, there is a color-coded card that is something related to quality. You can use specific text or labels in case you have a virtual board and you use like a ticketing system where you can add specific text or labels, use them, add them, testing, go for it. You can create also checklists. So each, let's say for example, each story has a checklist of things that needs to be done when we are talking about testing. It can be case two. Or each testing activity per story gets an own card. And that's the preferred way that I think is something that we should, or you can try out, at least I am doing it when I'm working with teams is, we have a user story in, in most cases, we have development tasks that are really like in really thin slices defined and refined and planned. And we should do the same with the testing activities. Why not? Write a card for creating test cases in case you need to create test cases. Write a card for test data. Write a card for exporter testing write specific tasks for the test automation. What are you going to automate on which level? Write it down, yeah, that, that's the perfect thing. And then if all cards are on the right side in the done column, story's done. And this is also something that I visualized here. So you can see here, we have basically two stories, story A and story B. Story B is just that there are like more tickets on the board. And then we have the different columns. We have ready, in progress, in review, and done. 
we have story A has some developer card tasks here. So coding is something is here. And then we have the testing cards, define tests, we have the automated tests, we have exploratory testing, and there can be potentially more things. Accessibility, security, whatever is on your mind, whatever you have thought about and planned in your activities. And with that, it's much clearer for the team saying, okay, look, we have all the development tasks done, but there are some testing tasks left. How about we support the testing activities and the quality thinking to get everything done from that point of view? because there is no testing column that can pile up with stuff. And if the team is working correctly with other agile methodologies, the team is starting a story, completing a story until they start the next story. Yeah, There are some mixed options that the team can pursue and go forward with. That's fine. That's up to the team. But that's the way I would like to go, or I, sh I would recommend you to go. So what do you think about it? So let's summarize it. To the remove test column will remove silos inside the team. Yes, it would definitely be the case. Try it out. The remove test column will foster more collaboration between developers, testers, product managers, even agile coaches, designers, interaction designers, whatever's on your team, it will drive more interaction. Um, the remove test column will also create more communication. This is tightly connected to collaboration and communication. You will talk more about testing and activities you are going to do. And this helps the team to establish this quality mindset. That's the next topic. It will share the quality mindset and responsibility inside the team. Believe me, it's the case. I have seen it myself when I was on vacation and we had no test column. Developers were treating the quality in the same way when I was in the office. And that's the perfect part. So that, that's great. If you achieve that one, you won. Of course, you need to find your way of visualizing the testing activities on your board. It doesn't need to be like, okay, you get rid of testing column. You don't need to do anything testing. No, you have seen an example. And I think if you use your favorite web browser and your favorite search engine, you will find some example boards or things that you can do. Maybe talk to your agile coach if he or she has some ideas on how to visualize the work. Maybe there are some creative, great creative things at, where, um, at your hand. And now I would like to, yeah, give you a little homework task, like start an experiment in case you have a test column in your team. Go and delete it and see what's going to happen. Talk about it in the next retrospective. Talk to your agile coach before, say, hey, look, we have problems in testing or I have problems in testing or I think that we have not this quality mindset thinking and we should change something. And that's the test column. Go and delete it and see what's going to happen. That's it for today. I hope you liked the video. Let me know what you think about the topic. It's a bit of controversial topic, I know. Leave me a comment, leave a thumb, thumbs up as always, leave a subscription to support me. Looking forward to the next videos that I've already prepared for you. Have a great day, good morning, good night, whenever you're watching the video. See you soon, bye bye.